Dave at USA Performance. We're here at our balancing shop. We've got a Gen 3 Hemi on the balancer. Um, these things normally take some, uh, take quite a bit of uh, work to, to balance it. Um, we, we spun it up with the correct bob weight on it, and this is what we came up with. So, on the, we're 100, needs a 123 grams on the front and 163 grams on the rear. Now the only way is it, it's light right now, so it needs to have metal. Well, the machine's telling us that we need to have the metal out here. Well, we can't add the out there. So what we'll do, we'll come back and put some mallory in this end, and then take a little bit. We can draw a little bit out of this end to fine tune it and bring it bring it back in where the balance is supposed to be. Um, on the rear, it's showing it's 160. Three grams out on the rear, and we can put. Uh, we're probably going to need two slugs back here, so we're going to we're going to go ahead and uh, and get the crank over so we can drill it and uh, start putting some Mallory in it. Let me back up a little bit and explain what Mallory is. Mallory is actually a type of tungsten. Um, it's a little softer than most, so it can actually be machined so that we can machine it down to the exact um, size that we need. Um, the weight of it is about double what steel is, and we're going to show you that. Mm -hmm. There's a piece that's 218 grams. Now the same thing in Mallory, from the 218 goes all the way to 484 grams. That's the difference. Um, now what it actually adds onto the crankshaft is around 50% because we have to take in consideration we're boring the steel out of that hole. So, but it still adds 50% more weight, and that's why some cranks, we have cranks that are up to eight or 10 uh, pieces of mallory in a crankshaft. Um, now, we can, now we can get over and uh, show how we prep the mallory and go from there. He's taken off the, off the weight of the crankshaft. Now, what, what this, this uh, bob weight does is we add, have a formula to add up the piston weight, the ring weight, the pin weight, um, the, the small end of the rod, and that's your reciprocating weight. And then there's a weight of the of the big end of the rod and the and the rod bearing, and all that uh, actually the oil that would be in uh, in the oil clearance too. And then that there's a formula for that. And then we, you figures out how much weight needs to be on each one of these rod journals so that we can spin it up, and that's how we end up with uh, how much weight we're going to need on it. And these are aluminum, so you're not going to take the chance, or much less chance, of doing any damage to a journal as far as banging and clunking it around on there. It's not going to hurt these journals a bit. How'd you get into balancing? I had a speed shop down here for seven years. Oh, okay. One man operation. Care for you. Just all self-taught. I just want to make sure that I've got enough room and don't get it near the edge because I always drill a half-inch pilot first. Right. So I throw that in there. Now when I know I know when I go to three quarters, I'm going to have this much room. It's it's hard to get through that nitriding on it. There's oh, yeah. if they give me too much trouble. If they give me too much trouble, I've actually had to take the the angle grinder, grind kind of 15,000 off. You heard Scott talking about nitriding, and I've uh, talked about it in some of my videos. I want to explain to you what nitriding is on a crankshaft. It's a surface treatment. It's only a few thousands thick, but what it does, it makes it wear resistance and gives you a good case hardening on the outside. The inside of the crank stays very, very strong. It's not brittle. Uh, it uses a nitrogen gas. Uh, they use different chemicals with it. Uh, it's in an oven at 900 to 1,000 degrees, and it's a, it takes a, a couple of days or sometimes three and four days to actually nitride one. But that's why it's so hard when you're drilling that first part of the hole, because that case hardens really, really hard. Once you start going, man, you gotta go, because if you change a bit, you're gonna wind up with a step in that hole. 
Yang ain't gonna get nothing in it. And I've also found that for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just the way these, the way these bits are, or whether it's the material or what, but if I use any kind of a cutting tool, the bit lasts about half of it. We're gonna go ahead and press this in. Got the slug measured. Always cut the slugs after the holes drilled because you're not gonna get the hole exactly perfect every single time. This way, we got the right amount of press every single time. What I'm doing here is, is if it needs a lot of work on opposite ends, and for instance here where it was asking me to drill a hole here and I can't, I'm doing the same thing by going exactly opposite and adding weight. It makes me nervous because anything you do over here is going to affect the opposite end to some degree. So a lot of times if we're doing something kind of wonky like this, I'll go ahead and start on one end and at least make sure we've got enough weight in it and then go to the opposite end. Take it back off, go to the opposite end, get the slugs in there, put it back on one final time and wrap it up. Man, I can't quite get to 500 yet, safely. Now, at position 21, I can take 100 out here by adding that weight instead of having to remove weight here, which is which is not possible. So we made it. Now we can go to the other side, and it actually did not affect the other side too much. No, no, no. Two, two grams in one position. So now you can take it right off. I'll make it out of here. Yep. Okay, Dave, thanks. Okay. I'll... No, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Over. Nice thing about the Mopars is that it's a bolt-on reluctor wheel. So I was able to pop that wheel off. We had to we required two one-inch slugs in the back. Those are all taken care of. Same procedure as the front. Now it's back on the machine. We can spin it up again and see where we're at. And now we start drilling holes. Now if you're gonna be adding or actually adding or removing material, you gotta figure the closer you get to the center, the less effect it's gonna have. So rather than being concerned with the top here, I will actually go to take a measurement to about half inch down. And it will change the numbers on there, but it just, it just seems a little more predictable that way. Um, but it asks for that dimension on the front and rear, then it'll ask for a dimension from this block to the center of the counterweight, from this block to the rear counterweight, and then it'll last for center to center. And once you punch that in, you spin it up, you set your RPMs to 500, give or take a couple, and fire it up. Can you explain uh, bob weight? We'll go through uh, how these bob weights are actually poured up. There is a formula. Um, w without getting into all of that, uh, you're, you're basically simulating the weight of, of your big ends of your rods two bearing inserts you add a couple grams for oil for the oil clearance and then you're going to take the weight of one piston your rings your wrist pin everything up above and the small end of the rod um, and you pour up your bob weights you'll come up with a number obviously these are identical and it's basically just steel shot so we'll come over here to the gram scale in this case each half needs to be 852 and a half We'll zero it out, and then it's just steel shot. Eight 
852 and a half. come back over here zero it out and I like to be within a tenth or two and there we go then we'll come over here to the journal Now obviously this can move around on a journal. As I was saying, this is aluminum. You don't have to worry about marring up the, the journal or anything. This way means absolutely nothing. It will not change anything. What will change is if you have this side to side. You've got to have that within, I mean, as close as you can get it. I like to be within less than 10 thousandths for sure. That will change the amount of, that That will mess up the balance job if you don't have that where it should be. And again, this way means nothing. It won't change a bit. This way will. So you want that dead center on your journal. When you get on this side, you know that, that if that's not perfectly flat, it doesn't want to drill a straight hole. Right. And it doesn't have to be. It just, it just looks a lot nicer if you get it centered. starting to smooth out yeah yep. and also on another side note if, if you see it was asking me to drill at position 20 it will always if you're taking a lot of weight off for whatever reason however the machine does it it always tends to you'll end up walking this way is, is you're drilling holes I don't know why it does that so if this is calling it like 39 grams at position 25, I would be better off drilling at maybe position 27. But I want to get it up on here, up on the level. It's it's too hard to drill this right here, and that's what I made that little, those little blocks for. Um, it's just kind of a these things they don't always make sense. You just have to go where they tell you to go, and take your material. See how the screen's not shaking anymore? Yep. 3.8 and 2.1. Now what's nice is I've already got a hole there, so I'll just go touch it up a little bit. That's how you balance a rotating assembly. And uh, no 20 or 30 gram uh, tolerance here. Like to get them uh, uh, two to three grams. Uh, probably not really necessary, but it just makes for a better product. I mean, we're here, why not, why not do it as, as well as we can? Hope you have a better understanding of how crankshafts are balanced and how Mallory is installed uh, when you have some heavy duty parts in it. Uh, you got any questions about it? You can give me a call right here at USA Performance Parts. 704-397-7979.